<laughs> All right, Glock 19, Gen 5. Two of them. Does that make it Gen 10? I don't think so. Yes, they're quite empty, as you can tell. You know how you can tell? There's a big orange magazine follower there. And that is one of the changes uh, in the Glock Gen 5 magazines. So let's talk. And then I bought one because I thought, okay, I know. I'm kind of a Glock guy. If a Gen 5 comes out, I need to own one. So I bought one as well. All right. Now, we're going to talk about it. I'm sorry we're so late getting to the Gen 5 Glock. But, you know, we, we don't get them early. Don't want them early. Uh, they're out there on the shelves now, uh, here and there, and so we have one. Uh, we just, uh, just like you guys, we want to get them when they're out. And uh, we're going to give you our thoughts on them, what we think of the new one. And I say them, you know, since I have two, but uh, what we think, they're, and they're the same exactly. Can you imagine? Uh, they really are. They're very similar. <laughs> well, not only in, in manufacture and what they look like, but in, in the trigger and everything. You can't really tell the difference when you pick it up and shoot. You uh, have to look at the serial number to tell the difference. So I'm going to shoot the one that goes back the most today. I've shot them both. This one is mine. Uh, so I'll, I'll shoot yours. Uh, <laughs> Because uh, one of you will probably be the owner, so I'm going to shoot yours. I've been, I've probably put a couple hundred rounds through it, and uh, in the last uh, five or six days, not had any problems. All right, imagine that Glock 19 and not having any problems. Pretty amazing, huh? So, uh, yep, we're gonna we're gonna shoot it some more, and I'm gonna talk about it and tell you what I think. Gen 5 Glock, it's here. And uh, as I understand, it's kind of mostly uh, what the Glock M was, you know, the military uh, uh, submission that Glock didn't get, you know, as far as an adoption. So it's pretty much what that gun was, I think. But they came out with a model this summer that, you know, had front serrations and it was a little different and I've, I've not really handled that particular one. But anyway, the, the Gen 5 I have. And uh, there's a lot going on with it. And I, you know, I always say this, hey, we're not gonna do a 35 minute video and then 36 minutes later, we're finished, right? And I'm saying life is good. I'll try not to do that. We're gonna do a, probably a, a real more detailed comparison between it and the Gen 4, get it some of the internal guts out, some stuff maybe, okay? Really bore you to death. And, uh, you know, and then we'll do your usual chapter two maybe if we want, whatever we wanna do, we'll do it. We like to shoot if you haven't noticed that. So today, I want to just kind of give you my impressions and, and, and give you some of the basic differences and shoot the thing and see how it works again, live on camera. And again, I'm not having any difficulties with it. I'm not surprised at that. And it's not the kind of firearm I feel like, uh, you know, need to shoot it a thousand times. You know, I mean, why would you need to do that with a Glock? You know, they just tend to work. So on the outside, Take a quick look, and you you know, uh, and you've probably read about a lot of this already. You got your flag uh, flared magazine well, you know, which is kind of uh, it's it's nice. You know, you don't need it, but it's kind of nice. And you've got uh, the straight grip. That's one of the big difference. The finger grooves are off. Here's the Gen 4. You know, you got your finger grooves, and they went back to kind of the Gen 2 with no finger grooves. Now, I actually have a Gen 2 out here. That's not it. Here it is. I've got the talon grips on it, but you can see it's straight and there's no finger grooves on it. That's my Gen 2 Glock 19. And also you got that same gap, you know, right here. All right. So they basically went back to the Gen 2, uh, you know, magazine uh, or the grip. And then uh, you, you can also notice that on the magazines, the newer magazines, you've got more of a lip on them. And uh, so you can just rip that thing out of there if you need to get a little bit of a hang up or something. So you got that, that same deal there. All right. So you got a little more of a gap. Now I understand some folks are having a little bit of trouble with that gap if they have large hands. Hasn't bothered me, but it bothers some folks a little bit. That gap and then that extended mag uh, pad, base pad there. Uh, it doesn't bother me. I mainly use these two fingers and I don't, I don't like, I guess it's people who are just squeezing like crazy with that little finger maybe it bothers them and on recoil I don't know so just be aware of that okay that part of it and all my shooting I, i've not noticed that being an issue and i tell you i still am uh between a rock and a hard spot i i don't i can't decide whether i prefer the finger grooves or not i can take them or leave them when i pick it up and shoot it i really can't tell 
if anything, I might prefer the finger grooves. I don't know. You know, John uh, always thought he preferred uh, no finger grooves, but, you know, he's been handling both, and he's not so sure either now, I think. Uh, so, you know, six one, half a dozen the other, maybe. Just depends on you. Depends on your hand. If your fingers hit those grooves in the wrong place, of course, that makes them undesirable. And I think that's why some people really hate the finger grooves. So you either hate them or you love them, it seems, on that. All right, so, and of course, I've shown all these are empty. Um, so just cosmetically or on the outside, exterior, just, you know, that's a big difference there. Got the same stupid hump. Uh, the Glock just seems infatuated with. One of these days, maybe they'll put a straight grip on a Glock. I'd love it. Or someone make a, uh, uh, you know, uh, what do you call these back straps that straightens it out. You know, perfect situation for that. I tend to put the mid-size back strap on. That's what I put on my, uh, this is my Glock Gen 5 right here. I always, I, I just tend to prefer the mid mid size right there. It doesn't bring my hand so far back or up that I get the slide bite or anything. It's just, it feels fine. So that's what I discovered that I like on, on my, my Glocks, the mid size. I usually put it on there. I didn't put it on this one. It's going back. It feels okay without it. it feels a little better with it. Okay, so the magazine, the big change, of course, is the, the follower there, the orange follower, and then the, the extended lip on that. Otherwise, as I understand, it's the same magazine. And it works on the older Glocks. It doesn't matter which Glock you put it in. They all work. Or you can use the old magazines. Here's an old magazine, you know, in the new Gen 5. So there's no problem with magazine compatibility, as I understand. Unless you got a really old one, uh, maybe, and you have uh, reversed your uh, mag release here to the other side, and it doesn't accommodate that. I believe that's, I believe that'd be the only problem you might encounter with that. Okay, generally speaking, though, they work. All right. Uh, look into the outside of the firearm. Again, um, you know, somebody I saw online was talking about how the, uh, well, that's a Gen 5, uh, I don't have my, one of my Gen 4s that hadn't been carved on the bottom, but I studied and studied that uh, uh, trigger guard, what's that thing called? And uh, the Gen 4 and this one, the Gen 5, I don't see any difference in the way it's carved under there. It just looks the same to me. It's exactly the same. I can't tell any difference, you know, so I don't know somebody was saying that there's a difference there And you get a higher grip and I don't know I couldn't I don't feel it or see it. <laughs> Maybe it's true uh, All right, you got your rail. What else now moving up to this? Well, obviously you can tell a big difference. You got your ambi slide lock, okay? And if you want to call an ambi slide release, it will do that too. That's why I did that initially on uh, you know the dual wielding there had one in the left hand, that's why we did it. Normally, in videos I tend to do it occasionally, but normally I don't release the slide. I, I release it with my hand. That's the recommended method. Uh, but if you happen to do it that way and use that, it's, it works. It's not like we're seeing on some modern pistols, uh, lower budgets, uh, lower budget pistols maybe sometimes. Uh, it's It will lock the slide back, but you can't release it for the life of you. It just won't release the slide you know we will on the Glock if that matters to you okay makes it a little bit bigger got a little wider and it, it, it seems it sticks out more than on the other Glocks uh, the Gen 4s and before it seems like it is thicker or it you know what I'm noticing I think it's just a little thicker piece of metal yeah it, it, I don't know if you can tell it it's just a little thicker maybe some a lot of more newer I don't know so it seems to stick out a little more uh, that is a flimsy piece of metal and there ain't trouble with it but it does stick out and it would get a little more width i think probably not enough that it's going to matter in any holster i've tried two or three different holsters we've got a, all these nuts and things uh it it still seems to fit in the same holsters without any trouble i've tried phobos this is stealth gear usa uh i had another holster i don't know what kind it was seems to not matter you might have a really tight fitting kydex holster that it could hang up i probably not but uh, you want to test that other than that the slide and everything is the same i saw someone saying the slide was thicker and heavier i put the calipers on it it's no thicker you know it's the same same slide i saw somebody saying the gun was a couple of ounces heavier uh it's hardly any different the uh gen 4 is is uh 20 well 24 you know 23 and three quarters ounces and by my weighing and this one is 24 ounces just a hair under 24 so there's almost no difference virtually no difference in weight okay with an unloaded magazine so just so you know that uh there's what's 
there's a lot of early stuff out there on these guns and some of it just didn't seem accurate to me. I, I saw somebody talking about the, uh, the recoil uh, spring being longer and not working on the earlier firearms. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. I wonder why they did that. Well, I took it apart and it looked the same. I put it in the other gun. It worked in the other gun and the Gen 4 and they, they look the same and they feel the same. They're the same width, uh, length. And, and so I think best I can tell, they work in either generation. So just let you know that too. Before I take it apart here, let's shoot it a little bit more. You want to? Gen 5. All right, I've got magazines. Let's put it in the holster. Uh, I want to make sure we'll draw out of a holster. Okay, <laughs> you might notice the target we're pounding down there. That's a, uh, it's a new one. We're going to move it over there. We have a problem with those red targets. If you've noticed, they fall off about half the time, especially when John's shooting them. It seems we have it jury rigged one on left. Anyway, that one is going to go over there once it dries out a little bit. But we uh, we got that from shootsomesteel.com. They're going to give us a, a shooting tree, a new one. We moved the one we had, so we appreciate their help. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. They make some cool stuff. Cowboy. Two liter. Two liter. Two liter. Two liter. Two liter. <laughs> I just thought all the two liter liters needed to be taken out. And also, how about a little pot smoking? How about a little more. <laughs> oh my. You know what I should do? I should do a speed load since we have a flared magazine well. All right, we'll do it in slow motion. Pretend I just went empty. Oh, it went right in. Pretty cool. <laughs> All right, one more mag. Make sure it works. Oh, let's shoot this target a couple of times from the holster. All right. It's got to shoot out of a holster. That's an important uh, aspect. And it did. Not bad. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry, I'm just having a little fun. You know how it is when I get a Glock in my hand. Okay, now I'm not trying to sell you these. Uh, <laughs> there are enough infomercials out there on these, I'll tell you. Um, I, in fact, you know, I bought one. I felt like I was obligated. I really did. And, uh, and you know, I can always handle another Glock. But, you know, if I needed a Glock 19 and it weren't for what we're doing, I, and I needed another one, I, I'd just go with the Gen 4 probably. Uh, I'm, I'm a little disappointed that the trigger is not, like, massively better, you know, as I had read about. <laughs> Both of these, I mean, the trigger's fine. It's a Glock trigger. But... I mean, I don't know when it's going to break. I mean, maybe that's good. I, apparently, a lot of people like them like this. Uh, it's my another of my big beefs with the Glock uh, is it's hard to find one that's got a crisp trigger. But when you do, like, where is it? Is this it? No. Well, both, I tell you, both of these do. This Gen Two, and uh, yeah, both of these. This is a Gen Two Glock, and when you pull that trigger. Okay, it, it, the take up is right to there, and there's a wall, there's a wall, and then, then it's a crisp break. It's crisp. I mean, I could take that to a, to a bullseye match. This one, this is the MOS version, but it's just coincidence. Same thing. Oh man, I love this trigger. When I get back, pull it up, the take up, and then it hits a little bit of a wall there, and I know exactly when it's gonna break, and I really like it. And so I've gotten kind of spoiled by the two or three, at least that I have that with triggers like that. And I was hoping these would be like that. No, these are kind of your typical Glock trigger, uh, your standard. And the reason I make a, a point of that is they bragged on the trigger so much. And it's supposed to be smoother and everything. Maybe it is. It is a little smoother as it pulls through. But there's no, there's nothing crisp about it. You know, uh, I, I don't, I'm not sure when it's going to break. I miss that wall. I like that little bit of a wall and then know when it's going to break. It feels a little creepy to me. Uh, uh, they, they redid the trigger, you know, the, the, the trigger there, the firing pin block is more like the Glock 42 or 43. And I'll show it to you. And it's supposed to, the trigger bar, everything's supposed to roll over it 
uh, more smoothly, and, and you kind of feel that it does, but it's just not crisp, and I don't understand that. My Glock 43 and 42 are crisp, so I can't blame it exclusively on that. So we'll take it apart. Now, a lot of these newer ones, the Gen 5s, I understand, come with uh, uh, night sights and stuff, so they're more common. I got both these with standard sights. Before I take it apart, you got a new finish, it's supposed to be the newest super duper stuff on the slide. And uh, it's slicker, I'll say that. And I was a little afraid when I heard that, that uh oh, it's gonna be back to the 90s where you can't get a grip on the serrations. But no, they do fine, they do fine. So, you know, I can live with, with uh, the new finish, I guess, it's okay. Uh, it didn't uh, booger up the, the friction, you know, on the serrations, okay? Like a lot of those did back in the 90s. And uh, so let's let's take well, let's let's shoot another mag first. Do you mind? Because you know what? I haven't awakened the gong yet. It bothers me that he's over there sleeping. It really does. All right. I'll try the red plate. Boom. Let's try a pig. Going high. I see it. <laughs> okay. While I'm at it, let me bring it down and hit him. Knock him over. The smart aleck. Let's see if it'll shoot left-handed, too, while we're at it here. Okay. Didn't, uh, I didn't limp wrist it. If you're going to do that, sometimes it'll happen weak-handed. Okay, that's one of the old mags. See, I told you they work. doesn't have the orange follower. One of the nice things about the orange follower, too, uh, is when you, you have half a mag, you can, or you can tell where the ammo quits stops easier more easily you can see through the hole so so that's a plus i'll have to say one of the uh, things i didn't point out is of course the rounded contouring of the front of the slide and that's something i have always wished glock would do on their uh, standard mid mid-size uh, pistols they do it on the baby glocks they do it on the practical tactical big gun they used to, for some reason have never done it on the glock 19 or the the 20 or the uh well, yeah, the 23, the 22, the 17, and now they're doing that on this end, the 17 and the Gen 5. That I'm glad to see, really am. Of all the things that I'll talk about in this video, and then if we do another more in-depth thing, of uh, taking them apart and pieces by piece and that kind of thing, the, the two pluses, the two positives that for me are definitely positives are that, I like that. I don't know, it just seems to holster easier, more easily, looks better. Uh, and then the orange followers, you know, you got to admit that that's probably a plus, right? And uh, for me, that's a plus. Although they didn't get the uh, frame quite uh, trimmed there along with it. I guess a Dremel tool will take care of that. It's just a little bit off. So those two things I was glad to see. Um, straight grip, I can take or leave. Uh, the rest of the of the features to me are they are the plus for some people and they're not for others when it comes right down to it all right now that's kind of the outside of the, the corny thing okay gen 5 guess what it breaks down the same way all the others do all right interior uh yeah again looks like same spring to me maybe it's different the barrel fits i've tried to barrel in the, the other gen 4 it seems to work vice versa Okay, they did change it uh, on the interior. It's got a little bit of a crown, which is good, of course, you're cleaning from the front. And they changed the rifling a little bit. It's, uh, as I understand, it's just modified. It's still polygonal, but it's a little different. Uh, correct me if you know differently. Uh, there's a lot of misinformation on, on these Gen 5s in uh, confusion. Uh, I, I'm assuming you still are not advised to shoot lead bullets in them. I didn't see anything on their website about that because I think it's still polygonal rifling. I've seen people say it's the newer, it's Ballard, it's cut rifling, you're gone. The, the, the polygonal rifling is, is a thing of the past with Glock and all that. But I don't know, it looks like polygonal rifling to me. Yeah, but I, I think it's a modified version of it. So anyway, 
If you're planning to shoot lead bullets, uh, you still might want an aftermarket barrel. Just look into that more deeply. So that's the difference in the barrel. And also, oh, oh I forgot. This one is, uh, what are they calling it? It's the master, uh, yeah, I knew I'd forget that. They, they're calling it something. It's not on the gun. I was thinking it was written on the barrel. But at Marksman, that's it. Marksman barrel, the Glock Marksman barrel. And uh, it's supposed to be more accurate, all right? So uh, <laughs> put it in a bench rest or a vise and see if you can tell any difference. Because I doubt that anybody is going to tell any difference standing and shooting. Even Rob Latham, okay? Maybe him, but I doubt it. Uh, the others have been just plenty accurate. Now in the slide, as you can see here, We've got a different uh, firing pin block. It's more like on the, the 20 or the 42 and the 43s, okay? It's supposed to make it a smoother trigger and all that, and maybe it does, but it, it not what I would like, okay? And as I understand, the extractor is a little, I took it out and I didn't take them out of the other guns, but the extractors are slightly redesigned. And uh, even the, uh, uh, ejector but I really couldn't tell any difference when I took apart my uh, gen there it is my gen 4 here gen 4 is on the left and the extract or the ejector excuse me the ejector back here I, I don't know I may have a little more twist to it uh, so I guess it's probably about the same but now you notice uh, some differences in there maybe uh, you got first of all you got one pin on the Gen 5 instead of two pins. So the uh, locking block there is held in with one pin instead of your two pins here where it helps hold in the, of course, the slide lock and spring system is a little bit different on the Gen 4s. They changed that fairly dramatically. This is the kind of thing I might do a more detailed thing and take it apart and show you in, a, in another comparison. But you can see the uh, slide lock is to be ambidextrous the way they made it. And it's probably the best way to do that. It's all kind of a one piece thing. I took that out. It's got a little spring built into it, actually. That's well, I was glad to see that. I don't know if you can see the little spring in there, but it's actually part of uh, this piece, which is all one piece, and it just slides back down in there, and it catches on a little ledge there. Okay, and you've got to take the uh, slide uh, lock or the yeah, locking block out to get to that, of course, and then take the trigger out. All right, and then uh, the trigger mechanism is different. The trigger bar, uh, the spring, the return spring is different back in here that's a different system okay i've not had all that and inspected that i take their word for it i'm going to do that one day and just see what we've got there okay uh main point is you see there are a lot of changes a lot of differences between this and the gen 4 and i would say for a lot of you and maybe me that that could be a negative now these changes they may be positive in a lot of ways because some of these things changing the trigger mechanism i will assume glock has been studying this all along and based on whatever problems they might have encountered or whatever improvements in design they have come up with that they have implemented them in this firearm so i'll, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt that this represents kind of an evolution okay we can make this thing better now i know we've been calling it perfect all these years but we can improve this uh, I mean, think about it. If you're a Glocker, you know you still have any problems with them. For you true Glockers that actually shoot them, you know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, so you would think they didn't need improvement. But I give them the benefit of the doubt on that, that maybe this is an improvement. And maybe in 10 years, every Glock is going to be exactly like this. I don't know. And maybe they won't even make a Gen 4 anymore. Don't know when all that's going to come about or if it ever will. But just be aware of that because you can't... You can't inter interchange parts very much on these things. You can't take the slide off a of Gen 4 and put it on here with the barrel and, and everything and work right. I've tried it. And now you can put a Gen 4 slide on it, but it's not a, a really good matchup and the uh, slide locks don't work right, okay? Because you don't have the cutout. Think about it, on your uh, Gen 5 slides, you got a cutout, see, for your, your uh, slide lock there on, on both sides. Well, you don't have that on the Gen 4 slide, so I've done this a couple of times. So if you take the Gen 4 slide off, well, I don't have to grab it, but if you put it on here, think about it, there's no cutout, so it's pushed, it's held down. So it essentially holds up the entire ambidextrous slide lock down, you know, because it, 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 it blocks it. So it's just being held down over here, there's no, no sl slot for it. And so you essentially, it'll barely catch, I noticed, you know. So anyway, not a good situation. So 
and in your trigger bar, your trigger mechanism, it's not interchangeable, and so, so, so you got that compatibility issue, okay? For now, let's see what we have here. Let's get it all in the right place. Gen 5 slide. Gen 5, I can tell. Okay, so let's put everything in the right place. So I just want to give you a glimpse in there. Uh, you know, your, even your striker has a rounded nose on it now instead of that little wedge shape that the Glock is famous for having. Yeah, so a lot of pieces have been modified, just tweaked here and there. And uh, that renders a lot of the things and parts uh, incompatible with, with each other. So in some ways, you have a kind of a standalone, so this is the Gen 4 stuff. You got a bit of a standalone uh, firearm here. Okay? Uh, if you look at the back of the slides, like you can't, let's see, what was it? You cannot put uh, the Gen 5 slide on the Gen 4 frame. I tried it, it just wouldn't go, it gets blocked. You notice there's a little difference there in the cutout. It just won't go on. Whereas I believe it's the Gen 4 will go on the Gen 5, but it still doesn't work right, you know, because your slide locks and things like that. So, so that's, that's a big deal to some people, okay? Uh, that lack of compatibility, all right? So, so the Gen 5 is a bit of a standalone, even though it works, it seems to work. Now, if you're someone who doesn't have a Glock yet and you've been saving up your money and you just turned whatever age and you want to buy one, uh, you know, maybe, yeah, I don't know, that'd be a tough position to be in. Do I get a Gen 4 or a Gen 5? If you want more parts availability, uh, yeah, maybe a Gen 4 would be the way to go right now. But, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm a little confused about it. I'm not sure which way <laughs> you ought to go either. I'm just trying to show you the differences. Okay, let's just shoot a little more. Now, again, it shoots fine. It shoots great. Let's uh, go over there and Pop the gongs. Now let's pick a turkey off up there. Boop. And uh, the gong needs some more hits. <laughs> oh, and that shoot some steel target needs some more. I'll get him while he's close before he moves way over there. <laughs> I can hit him better. Yeah, that's yeah, terrible, isn't it? And I'm, I'm using some Glock 17 Max here, you notice I had loaded up. Let's try a little plate here. Oh, I missed, yeah. I mean, it just shoots right on. Let's put a few more on this paper. Throw some brass. Yeah, get the rest of that. <laughs> Smoke the rest of that pot. Yeah, of course that's an older magazine. They work fine. They work just fine. So, uh, you know, Gen 5. We'll shoot a couple more times. Maybe I'll think of something I was going to share with you that I, uh, I have forgotten about. Uh, like I said, we're sorry that we're a little bit late to the game. <laughs> no, we're not late to the game. Uh, they're just out, really. And uh, we want to get our hands on one. Uh, we try to, we actually try to avoid getting things early. I don't want to be obligated in that, that, uh, that manner. Uh, you know, but, uh, you know, and that's one of the great things about being able to get the most firearms from, from Bud's Gun Shop. You know, it's just, uh, you know, it beats going to the, factory or wherever and doing T and E T and E firearms. So uh, let me let me load one of the original mags. Oh no there's one right there with some ammo. I'll load one more of those. I have two of the uh, actual uh, Glock Gen 5 mags and then uh, we'll we'll try to wrap it up here. Okay. So uh, don't forget now go to the description. I'll put uh, a link to that shoot some steel there dot com. Check out their targets and uh, Check out our website. You know, we got some new T-shirts and stuff there. So a little shameless plug on some of our stuff there. Do remember though, 10% of that goes to charity. We're going to send that to the flood victims uh, for I don't know, maybe the next year. Okay. So uh, 
try to do a little good with that. And uh, what else? You know, all where we are on Facebook and all that, and Hickok 45 and Sun Channel, and all the strange stuff that we have going on, and all the people that help us. So it's 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 a it's a great life. You can get all the Tupperware that I want to shoot, right? Now again, I, as I said, I, uh, I I purchased one. I part of that, you know, where part of that comes from. The reason I had to do that, I have wanted Glock to contour the front of the Glock 19 for so long. I mean, that alone uh, sold me. Oh, great. You know, I don't straight grips fine. I can live with that. I am so happy they finally started doing that. That's the ultimate Glock because this is kind of the ultimate size pistol, I think, in a lot of ways. It's just such a practical size pistol. You know, that's why I've always liked the 23 and the 19. And I was so happy to see they were doing that. I, I don't know. There's a lot of things there, though, that, uh, I, you know, that makes me wonder. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it works, though. It's a Glock. Yeah, it works. That's the thing you can never argue with. There might be some features you don't want. There may be some compatibility issues you don't like, you're not happy about. Uh, even a couple of changes you're not crazy about. Uh, but the darn things work. Okay, they work. Well, let me, I shot that one a lot. I shot it before a lot before the video and you've seen it works. Let me shoot mine so I can get it dirty again too. Okay. That is one advantage too, having two of them. Uh, as we always say, whenever we review a firearm or, or shoot it you know you're just seeing one firearm you know uh, so you want to check around the web and see what experience other people are having with the firearm and that really only comes with time uh, but the truth comes out doesn't it on the forums on the internet on youtube uh social media you, you know if a firearm has a problem it reveals itself so but at least today we got two of them so let's put him back in a holster and uh, let's go after some cowboys here. Is that appropriate with a Glock? <laughs> uh, oh, let's test that flared magazine well. Yeah, oh, I forgot to. <laughs> yeah, I'll get that magazine. Uh, yeah, so the, the Gen 5. There are some other things about it I've probably forgotten to mention, but I wanted to, I, I think I ran through most of the changes and most of the, the differences in, uh, uh, well, pieces. Uh, you know, internally, there's just a lot of little tweaks that they've done. And hopefully it's for the better, you know, as time moves on and uh, not for the worse. Uh, again, you have to assume the engineers uh, are smart enough not to change something without some reason. You know, I, you know, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt at this point until people start having trouble, you know, with something that has never caused trouble before. All right. So I, kind of a mixed bag, you know, uh, you know, as usual, I don't you know, come totally uh, down on a firearm or up on a firearm. I uh, just kind of like to point out the negatives and positives from my perspective, from John's perspective, and uh, let you know what we think about it. Uh, there's no perfect firearm. Uh, again, uh, it probably will feel good to some of you, especially if you hate the finger grooves. And, uh, you know, cosmetically it looks good, that contouring, and it works. So whatever negatives there are and uh, compatibility issues with other earlier generations, you know, uh, at least the firearm works. It's a Glock. What can you say? It, uh, it, it'll give Glock haters a lot of ammunition let's put it that way it really will because if you don't like glocks and you're tired of hearing about them oh man you'll see the comments you know in this video and every other video uh, uh to reveal themselves right but if you uh, thing is even if you really like the glock firearm as, as i do generally uh you know i have some some uh issues with this one but uh it works what can i say life is good
Oh, hey, I hope you guys enjoyed what you just saw. Um, if you didn't, it was I had nothing to do with it. And if you loved it, then it was probably all my idea. Uh, but while I've got you here, I wanted to make you aware of our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute at sdi.edu. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can get a degree and uh, get certified in gunsmithing uh, with hands-on experience. And they also have an associate's degree in firearms technology. So check that out if you get a chance. That's sdi.edu. Edu, And also, while you're on the internet, uh, look at our website. We have a website now. It's called, it's really simple, Hickok45.com, spelled just like we spelled on YouTube. Uh, you can go over there and you can find t-shirts just like this one. Um, you can find links to all the people that support us. Uh, we got photo galleries. We got all kinds of stuff over there. Um, also, don't forget about our Facebook page, just Hickok45. I have one too, um, Hickok45 and Son on Facebook. And there's also a John Hickok facebook i got a bunch of them um there's also instagram the real hickok 45 at instagram there's also a john hickok 45 at instagram um what else do we have twitter hickok 45 on twitter i don't mess with twitter i don't like it um i guess that's about it i have another youtube channel called john hickok um i feel like we need more things but that's all that i can think of for now oh full 30 don't forget to check us out on full 30 dot com uh, we'll post videos over there also and uh i believe that's it so i guess you guys are gonna have to find something else to do now so um i appreciate it thank you